In this video, we are going to find all positive integers a and b, such that 2 to the power of a plus 3 to the power of b is a perfect square. This is a problem from Baltic Way 1994. Before we move on, don't forget to give a like, subscribe to my channel, and turn on post notifications. To come up with a strategy to solve this problem, we can try to um, plug in some small values of a and b and see what are the answers, so to kind of get a hint on uh, properties of our solutions. So by trial and error, you will get one of the solutions to be a and b to be equal to 4 and 2 respectively. And more importantly, there is no solution when a and b are smaller than these two numbers. So let's see what actually happened when a take a smaller value, for example. So say, when a equals 1, then the equation is 2 plus 3 to the power b equals n squared. And the reason that we don't have a solution for this case is that left-hand side is actually congruent to 2 mod 3 because we have a power of 3, multiple of 3 added by 2, so that's 2 mod 3. But that's not, that's, not, that's not possible because n squared, or in general a perfect squared, can only be congruent to 0 or 1 mod 3. So that means we cannot have a solution. But a similar strategy won't work when a takes larger values because when a is at least 2, then 2 to the power of a is then not just, a, not just an even number, but it's a multiple of 4, because it's divisible by 2 squared. So 2 to the a is congruent to 0 mod 4. Now we can turn to take a look at mod 4 on both sides of the equation. So because I can rewrite 3 to the power of b to be minus 1 or to the power of b mod 4, and that gives us minus 1 or 1 mod 4, depending on the parity of b. Say when b is odd, then it's minus 1 mod 4. If b is even, then it's 1 mod 4. When we add them up, It's either minus 1 or 1 mod 4. And so, knowing that a perfect squared must be either again 0 or 1 mod 4. Well, for these facts, you can try them out. And so that means for both sides to be equal, we must have the case 1 mod 4. And that can only be achieved when n is odd and more importantly, 3 to the power of b is 1 mod 4. And that means b has to be an even number. b is an even number. So consequently, we can let b to be a multiple of 2 of another number, I call that big B, and that uh, for B being another positive integer. Then the equation becomes 2 to the power of a plus 3 to the power of 2b equals n squared. Now this equation becomes easier to solve because two of the powers, the exponents, are even. So that means we have two squares. And I can move them to one side and that gives us difference of squares. So n squared minus 3 to the power of 2b equals 2 to the power of a. 
and so we can factorize like this and we have two things two net positive integers multiplied together being equal to a power of 2 now from this we can tell that both numbers whether we are adding or subtracting uh, 3 to the power of b uh, from n both numbers have to be a power of 2 so I can say that the sum itself is a power and the difference is also a power and because they multiply together uh, when they multiply together we have 2 to the power of a so I set the index the exponents m and a minus m so that the sum will still be a now we know nothing about the n so all we can do is that uh, subtract two equations of course having that m is larger than a minus m and when we subtract we have 2 times 3 to the power of b equals 2 to the power m minus 2 to the power a minus m so this equation involves only powers of 2 and the power of 3 now moving on we can see that the left hand side is um, kind of kind of factorized 2 times the power of 3 but the right hand side is not factorized it's kind of an expanded form because it's a difference of two powers so I'm going to take a common factor on these two terms which is just actually the smaller power of 2 2 to the power a minus m the smaller one and then after taking out this common factor we'll have this power multiplied by 2 to the power 2m minus a so that the sum of these two exponents will be m and then minus 1 afterwards now from this we know that the things underlined in red are odd numbers or the parts that are not underlined are even numbers and in particular parts of 2 so that means I can say that since 2 and 3 are co-prime we, we can consider kind of um, uh, the factors so we have a minus m equal to 1 and 3 to the power of b equals 2 to the power 2m minus a minus 1 now at this point we know that b is positive so that means left hand side is at least 3 so that means we must have these numbers I mean these exponents to be positive as well and the right hand side so why not we just consider an equation of a simpler form which is that when do we have 3 to the power of say um, m equals 2 to the power of n minus 1 where m and n are positive integers now for this we, again we can try to take um, mod 3, mod 4, things like that this time I will choose mod 3 so to do this I will consider mod 3 then left hand side is just 0 while the right hand side is 2 minus 1 all to the power of n minus 1 congruent to 0 mod 3 so that means minus 1 to the power of n must be 1 mod 3 and so n is even so I can let the small n to be 2 times big n where again integer n is positive 
So 3 to the power of m equals 2 to the power 2 times big n minus 1. Notice that the right hand side is a difference of 2 squares. So the product of 2 to the power n plus 1 and 2 to the n minus 1 and these two numbers the product is a power of 3 so as 3 is a prime number that means these two numbers have to be a power of 3 as well But the thing is, these two powers, these two powers of three, has a difference of only two. So that means we have no choice but to say that. Therefore, x equals 1 and y equals 0, so that we can have the powers of 2 to be powers of 3 to be 1, 3 minus 1, that equals 2. Because as the integral powers of 3 goes higher, then the difference will get uh, way larger than 2. So that's not possible at all. So that means x equals to 1, y equals to 0, and so 2 to the n minus 1 equals 1, and this big n has to be 1. Now we can further trace back. To the fact that uh, the small n in the equation that we have set is 2 times this big n. So the small n equals 2. That means 3 to the power of m equals 2 squared minus 1. m equals 1. So the only solution set possible will be 1 and 2. And we have not set any extra constraints on um, the positive integers m and n so going back I can say that therefore b has to be 1 while this 2m minus a has to be 2 now the big b equals 1 implies that uh, the small b equals to 2 as we have defined it previously over here that small b equals to 2 times big B and over here we have a minus m equals 1 and 2 m minus a equals 2 so we can solve that so by solving them we know that m equals 3 and consequently a equals 4 and so that means our only solution set is indeed the one that we have um, tried earlier which is 4 and 2 and by checking we have the 2 to the power of a plus 3 to the power of b equals 16 plus 9 and that's indeed 5 squared perfect squared so this is the solution to our problem